Hi guys, so, so far this year we've seen businesses being told to set up in the European Union if they want to continue trading with it. This was the advice from the Department of International Trade. We have seen staff shortages as a result of the ending of freedom of movement, which in turn resulted in empty supermarket shelves and a loss of investment in the UK, to name just a few of the problems caused by Brexit. Now I think it's important to call out Brexit cheerleaders, and I think it's important to call out Nigel Farage on his lies. But we have to be reminded what he banged on about. This is him speaking two years ago about how things will be post-Brexit. He dismissed the idea of problems arising from leaving the single market and the customs union. Now, remember, Nigel advocated for leaving without a deal, a clean break Brexit, as he called at the time, which is a no-deal Brexit. It would have seen not just non-tariff barriers, which has resulted from Boris Johnson's deal, but also tariffs being imposed. Listen to what Farage dismissed as scaremongering back in 2019. said all the way to it is we will not vote for a deal that is worse in terms of our trade and our jobs than the existing customs union and the existing single market. And the Prime Minister herself, Theresa May, has said that her deal will mean, and these are her words, less market access as a result of her deal because we're withdrawing from the customs union and the single market. Less market access means selling fewer of our goods in Europe, fewer jobs and worse paid jobs. That is the reason, that is the reason why we need a referendum on this deal. 85% of the global economy, 85% of the global economy, and that figure grows every year, is outside the Eurozone. So okay, but the United States trades mainly with its neighbours. Australia trades mainly with its neighbours. Britain trades mainly with its neighbours. So cutting yourself off from your neighbours doesn't make any economic sense. All right, so what we do... So things are going to be worse. So what we do, so things by are going cutting to worse, ourselves... So still 15%. By cutting ourselves off from the 15% of the world who regulate our businesses, who take away our competitiveness, we're opening ourselves up to a big, new, exciting world. But again, we're back to this point. You and I can talk well, economics. You and I can talk I economics. Well, you do, do you know what? Totally I'm very interested in hearing all these people saying how bad it would be for us. People who've never, ever bought or sold a good or a service or ship stuff around the world. I have. <laughs> What's interesting is the people who are shouting the loudest about the consequences of Brexit are people who are shipping goods around the world. People who are shipping goods to Europe, gin producers, fishermen. These are the people who are highlighting the issues as a consequence of Brexit. And I'll tell you people, something. And I'll tell you something. People who run these companies, they don't want to leave the European well, Union, Nigel. The They've people, been very clear. The people, the people, the people who, who run the multinationals, the people who run the multinationals, of course, want to keep things as they are because it's a great system to crush the so, little man so, and woman. So, so I don't know if you heard him, but he said. The multinationals don't want to leave because they're happy with the system because it crushes the little man and woman. Now, I've highlighted this on numerous occasions. Who's suffering the greatest from Brexit, apart from the working class and the poor, are the small businesses, the ones who are struggling with the paperwork, the ones who have to hire staff in order to deal with this extra paperwork, the companies who have to lay people off because they can't afford uh, the new restrictions or the, the restrictions, I, I should say, of being a third country. The companies who can deal with this, the multinationals who are against Brexit at the beginning, are able to throw money at the problem. They have the resources to deal with that. They also struggled at the beginning. Now, they were against Brexit because they understood what it was going to do. The small businesses, unfortunately, listened to Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, listened to their lies, and bought the snake oil, believing that everything would be fine. Ah, so this these is jobs, about this is about if, our position. These jobs go. This is about you don't mind if these jobs go. Then we're going to employed make, by Nissan we're, and Sunderland. We're, we're that's, gonna, that's okay. We're going to have a lot more jobs because they're going. We're going to have a lot more jobs. I'd love for Nigel to point now to where all these jobs are, unless he's talking about customs officers, or unless he's talking about people being hired to complete documents that didn't need to be completed before. Going to crush all these little well, people. If you right? remember the man who yes. told us if we didn't join the Euro, that they might leave Sunderland, well, he's currently, I think, in prison, but never mind. We've heard all these threats before. Stop trying to threaten us. Get <sighs> back to the key point. Why? So stop trying, tr trying to threaten us. Stop engaging in Project Fear. Stop scaremongering. Everything will be fine. Nigel Farage 
sold the idea that nothing would change, that businesses would be able to export as they were before. Why? Because the European Union needed Britain. They needed that market. They were desperate for British goods. They were desperate for British customers. And he sold it and he was very good at selling that snake oil. And a lot of people bought it, both small business owners and members of the public. And in many cases, we've seen how small business owners are reaping the benefits, reaping the whirlwind. They're, they're suffering the consequences of what Nigel Farage sold them. Now, Nigel Farage is doing perfectly fine. Nigel Farage hasn't been challenged uh, since Brexit. The, the strongest I've heard, the strongest arguments I've heard against him were maybe things are not going so well. And he said, well, that's because of the type of Brexit that was delivered. He's blaming Boris Johnson, of course. He's the one who started this, and now he's blaming Boris Johnson. I think it's important to see what these people had promised some years ago and to be able to see the reality now. The sad thing is, is that Nigel Farage is still yapping away. He's still shouting his mouth off and he's not been challenged. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?